In the real world, the time of the ancient Celtic Druids was a very interesting period in history. A huge portion about what we know from that time comes to us from reports of numerous Roman generals, which of course means that they're not the most accurate or unbiased reports that one could get. Because at that time, Rome was at war with basically everybody, and they wanted to make their enemies look as bad as possible. Of course, they wanted people to think of the Celts as barbaric monsters that sacrificed people in giant wicker statues. And this is where we get the iconic image of the wicker man, a giant humanoid effigy created from wood and wicker that ultimately was used as a cage to house sacrifices and then lit on fire. As for how much of this practice was actually fact versus what was fictionalized to make the Celts look bad, we're not really sure, and it's impossible to know. It is very much a case of history being written by the victors. Now whether or not these tales are true, it has ultimately created a lasting piece of imagery in that of a giant burning wicker man full of Roman bodies. And being an interesting legend means that, of course, it has found its way into numerous tabletop games. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about the Wicker Man from Pathfinder. So welcome to Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad. And as I mentioned, today we're going to be exploring the legend of the Wicker Man and specifically how we can make it into a really interesting monster for us to fight in Dungeons and Dragons. Now the Wicker Man as an enemy, of course, is a huge construct, a massive lumbering creature not unlike a golem that has been created by magic users for a specific purpose. And that is one of the things that I love so much about this creature and why I decided to convert it in the first place. See, when we think of druids, we always think of them having allies in nature, allies with animals that they've either taken under their protection or who are assisting them protect the forest, or in some cases, even trents, massive living trees that have come to life to defend the druids in the forest. And of course, druids have access to tons of nature-based Spells, and they're capable of achieving great things through their own magic spells alone. But the very existence of a magical construct like a wicker man raises the question, what do druids do when they're backed into a corner, when they have no other options? Or what are some ways that evil druids might manipulate their powers and secrets in a way to cause destruction and havoc? The Wicker Man fills a niche of such a specific theme that it's not going to be something you can use in every single game. But if you ever happen to be running a game with a druid antagonist or where there are druids involved, period, the Wicker Man could be a very interesting thing to throw into the mix. But in any case, today we're going to talk about just what this thing can do in battle, how it fights, and of course some plot hooks and ways that we can actually work it into our stories in 5th edition. So it's about time we gave the druids a combat option aside from wild shaping and casting spells, so let's talk about some... What is it? What's wrong, sister? Oh! So in the D&D setting, in order to actually create a wicker man, you need two things. First thing you need is access to the spells and incantations required to create a wicker man. Now in a lot of cases this probably goes without saying, but it's worth noting that in order to create one of these things, you can't just build a giant wooden statue and set it on fire. You have to know specifically what spells to be casting as you're doing it and what incantation you cast when you set the thing on fire. And I would imagine that the magic involved with creating a fully functioning wicker man is a very well guarded secret. I mean, you know druids and keeping their own language and whatnot secret from the rest of the world. So just imagine what secrets they keep from other druids who haven't yet proven themselves. And I imagine the ways to create a wicker man would be one of those secrets. The second thing you need is a sacrifice and it has to be a sentient creature. This is literally what is granting life to the wicker man. So what happens here is this giant wooden effigy is constructed, part of it being a cage in the creature's chest 
and then some unfortunate soul is placed in that cave the thing is set on fire with magic and when that person expires the actual giant effigy begins to shake and move and kind of has a life of its own. And much like any other golem, the Wicker Man is bound to the druids that created it. So it will spring to life and then go off on whatever terrible mission of destruction it is commanded to engage in. So the first thing you might be wondering is how does this creature not just fall apart once it completely burns itself out? And the answer to that is magic. The flames themselves are magical as they do not consume the Wicker Man and burn up all of the wood, but they will burn away anything else like normal fire. So it's terrifying for anything that isn't the Wicker Man who is on course perpetually on fire. A fun little perk to being perpetually on fire is that this creature is completely immune to fire damage. And it's not just immune. In fact, whenever it takes fire damage, it actually gets health back. Now I'm sure for many players, their first instinct wouldn't be to try to set the giant lumbering monster made of wood and fire on more fire when they see it, but we all know that one wizard who just casts fireball at the drop of a hat. Now as far as actual combat goes, these guys are pretty simple. They have a major slam attack that can cause a lot of damage, both bludgeoning and fire damage. And when they hit a creature with that attack, the creature is also grappled because their entire thing is that they want to grab people and shove them in that cage that is built into their chest. If it manages to grab someone, it can then make use of its second action, which is called Imprison, which literally involves the Wicker Man shoving that creature into its chest cage, whereupon that creature will struggle to escape and if the Wicker Man has its way, ultimately burn to death. If a creature in the cage dies there, it's obviously a dead, but then it also regenerates a bunch of hit points for the Wicker Man, thus feeding itself with the souls of whoever happens to find themselves burning alive inside of their horrible cage. In order to get out of the cage, the creature of course can try to cut their way out or their allies can try to help them do this. The cage has 30 hit points and an armor class of 20, so it's not going to be impossible, but it's also not going to be easy either. And if you do manage to break out of the cage by cutting yourself loose, it of course destroys the cage, so that way in the future, the Wicker Man won't be able to use this action again, and of course until it's fully healed. And if you do escape, that's not the very end because you are also on fire and until you take an action to put yourself out or someone else takes an action to put you out, you're gonna be taking a small amount of fire damage at the beginning of each of your turns as well. And that's pretty much this creature's entire modus operandi in combat. It lumbers in through the battlefield, lays waste to anything in its path, grabs any juicy looking humanoids, throws them in its chest cage, and that's pretty much it. It does also have a ranged attack, which literally involves it ripping a piece of itself off and hurling wooden flaming debris at a target. This of course causes a lot of damage, but it can only do this and nothing else on its turn if it chooses to take that action, so it's obviously going to try to get into melee. The other big benefit this creature has going for it is the fact that it is a construct, meaning it doesn't fall ill to a lot of the conditions that affect people like you or me. For example, it can't be poisoned, put to sleep, frightened, petrified, that kind of thing. And that pretty much sums this thing up in battle. It's fairly simple, but extremely terrifying. I would encourage you to actually look at the conversion document there in the description below because it will have the full details of the imprisoned ability. And yeah, it is nasty. But brutish combat strategies aside, the main reason why I enjoy this creature and why I think it'll make a good fit in a lot of games is because of the plot hook potential and just the boost to a really interesting story that it can create. So without further ado, let's talk about some. So picture this, a peaceful nomadic druid colony is living in one of the many huge forests that exist in the world. And of course, from the bowels of civilization comes some upstart noble's army that's clearing away the forest and settling a new city or encampment there. Of course, this does not sit well with the druids. Of course, the druids try diplomacy at first and warn them to basically stay off the forest and not destroy the natural world. When that fails, maybe they resort to kind of harrowing their invaders, not 
killing anyone yet, but making it extremely difficult for them by entangling the area and just destroying their carts and that kind of thing. And then if that doesn't work, ultimately things break down into essentially a war of a small band of druids versus the unending forces of some huge civilization. This isn't a particularly original story. I'm sure there are many modules out there that exist already, or maybe even just custom games that have been run kind of following this trope. However, what would those druids do if they were back into such a corner they felt the forest was going to be completely destroyed and there was nothing they could do about it? It's possible they might cut their losses, find another place to live, and just leave. But it's also possible that they may take things to the extreme and create an extremely dangerous and powerful weapon to utterly destroy their attackers. And this is where the Wicker Man comes into play. The Elder amongst the Druidic people knows some of the ancient dark secrets that have been passed down orally because it's too dangerous to have these things written on stone or paper. The Druids band together and build a massive effigy, and heroically, the Elder utters the incantation and sacrifices himself to give life to this monstrosity. This could create a very dramatic situation. Perhaps your players are on the side of civilization and they're ultimately going to have to fight this wicker man to save the people from these savages that inhabit the forest. Or perhaps they're on the side of the druids and they're trying to help them construct this massive wicker man and find the ancient secrets that have mostly been lost in order to give it life, not realizing the terrible truth behind exactly what it's going to take to bring this creature to life. Or maybe they're somewhere in the middle and they're still trying to negotiate peace right to the very end and stop the druids from unleashing this horrible weapon and also stop the spread of this society from destroying the natural world. Wherever they fall in the spectrum from civilization to the wildlands, this has the makings for a very dramatic encounter. And potentially a fiery and explosive end. It's also possible that you could have the Wicker Man be the creation of some kind of mad druid, an evil NPC that is going to ultimately be the big bad evil guy of your campaign. Or maybe he's just a minor hiccup along the way, but a druid who has been completely disenfranchised by his other druids and feels that the only way to protect the world is to destroy all of civilization, even those aspects of civilization that might be coexisting with the druidic ideal. So this druid constructs a giant wicker man and then fills it with captives and sets the thing ablaze and unleashes it upon a small town. Or at least he's going to try to. And this could ultimately end up resulting in a huge boss battle with your party, assuming they can't stop him from setting it up anyways, or maybe they show up just as he's trying to complete the ritual and they have to stop him before he can get this thing going and then they have a real fight on their hands. Or maybe in a situation similar to the first one we spoke of, this clash between a druidic society and a more advanced civilization, perhaps both of those groups completely destroy each other, and all that's left is a barren wasteland. Maybe a group of adventurers has to travel through this wasteland, there's nothing to worry about really, people know to stay away from there, there's no bandits, there's no wildlife that's going to interfere with them, but... Perhaps there is a massive wicker man that roams through the Badlands and will destroy them if it's able to find them. And that is why no one sends trade routes through there. Just a leftover relic still burning with the rage of a conflict 500 to 1000 years past. Or maybe you have a druid in your party who, whatever the situation is, against horrible odds, wants to create a wicker man and use it to assail whatever is attacking them. That's less of an overall plot point, but just an interesting option you could give to a player. You could turn into a whole quest where they're trying to find the ancient rites of how to create this colossus, and ultimately when they do find it, and they find out what the cost of making one of these things is, they have a decision to make. Not only if they're willing to make one, but if they do, who will be sacrificed? Because ultimately we are talking about a creature here who has the potential to go head to head with things like storm giants, so nothing to be taken lightly. In any case, that is all I've got on the Wicker Man today. I think it is a very interesting creature that has a lot of lore potential because it's very rare we see druid-focused monsters or even bits of lore, or even items really, in the game. So if you do enjoy what I do here and you want to see more videos like this one, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment down below all about what you think about the Wicker Man. 
either this creature or the Nicolas Cage movie. And just tell me some interesting druid-centric or non-druid-centric even plot hooks that you can come up with, because ultimately you don't need to use the druid angle, I just think that makes it very interesting. You could also just have it be a giant burning wooden guy. Also, I have a bit of a side announcement here. Uh, if you check the description below, you can find a link to my other YouTube channel called Chill Touch, where I release a lot of really crazy over-the-top synth music. Uh, I just released my first album there called Cantrips, which is a lot of synth music. All the songs are inspired and titled after D&D Cantrips. It kind of started as a joke amongst me and my players that a lot of the cantrips sound like they would make for titles of ridiculous synth tracks, so I did that. And also down there you can find all the links to Twitter and Discord and all that stuff, and if you have any suggestions for monsters you'd like to see covered in the future, Twitter or Discord are the places you want to drop those suggestions. In any case, I just want to say thank you so much for watching guys, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then.